Hello everyone, thanks for joining me again today and we're going to talk about two ways you can backfeed your electrical panel when the power goes out. And I'm going to talk about the right way and another way which is a dangerous way to do it and the wrong way. Uh, so the first thing is, is if you've got a generator, and the, the cord you want to use is one that is sized for the amperage and the watts that you're going to transfer to your electrical panel. You see the size of this wire and I'm going to take you outside to show you how and where it would plug in. So you, the right way would to install one of these uh, switch boxes where your generator would plug in here and you would keep your generator away from the house running outside and um, you plug in from your generator the other side to here and then this then will go into your electrical panel. Okay, so we're at the panel. Well, you know, you cannot just wire it right to the panel. You need this interlock kit, which I have a video that um, I'm gonna link to, and it'll show you how to install one of these, but this is a little interlock kit. And the way it works is, is that you have to switch off the main breaker, which would stop the power coming in from the street Okay, and then you would flip the breaker for your generator. So that little box I showed you outside, it comes in and the wire comes into here. Now that's a heavier gauged wire. It's a 30 amp breaker to accommodate the uh, amount of load that I would plan to use in the event of a power outage through the generator. Now some people want to power more things than, than they require. Uh, than, than I would require and they might use a heavier gauge wire they might have a bigger generator and would use a 50, a 50 amp or a 40 amp breaker but usually it's a 30 or a 50 okay so once this breaker is off you can slide this up and you can flip the breaker over this interlock kit prevents you from using the generator and back feeding your panel unless the main breaker is off for two reasons a, you don't want to um, have that thing coming in, the power from the street coming in. When the, your generator breaker is flipped, it's going to go back to your generator. But more importantly, um, if you're back feeding your panel and that breaker is on, you could send electricity to, through the phone lines and it's dangerous for the, for the crew, not the phone lines, the electrical lines, and it's dangerous for the crew that could be working on the wires. You, you can kill someone. All right. So, uh, so that power comes in, and then from here, it can power as many of these breakers that you choose. You could flip off the breakers that you don't need, or just make sure that you're only using enough power that your generator and wire and breaker can support. So 30 amps worth of power. Refrigerators, maybe the uh, motor on your, on your heater, your, if you've got a, uh, forest hot air heater, you know, your internet, some lights, refrigerator, your stove, if, if it's not electric, if you don't have an electric stove, okay, but you cannot power your air conditioning unit with, um, with that, okay, because look here, we've got, for the AC, we've got a 50 amp breaker just for the AC, so there's no way you can power the air conditioner with, with this setup. So that was the right way to do it. Now, here is another way that a lot of people choose to do, which is it can work, but it's unsafe. It's to have an electrical extension cord that has two male ends. Okay, so this one came with the cord, and this one I installed by cutting the other side off and install, installing another male end. And what you would do with this is you'd plug one side into your generator and then the other side into an electrical outlet and you're back feeding your panel through one of the outlets. It'll travel back up through the wire and into your panel and then you have power in the panel. Okay, So uh, uh, that definitely works. Now there's a couple things that are wrong with this idea. One, look at the size of the, the gauge wire here. Right? There's only so much power that you could send in from your generator 
through this electrical cord, okay, that, and have it be drawn from the appliances and other things in your house that you plan, that you plan to use. So you could be overloading this wire. Again, look at the size of, and the gauge of this wire. Same generator, right? Look at this, huge difference. Next, let's look at the panel again. So you, let's say you have an electrical outlet that's com likely coming off of a 20 amp breaker. So you have a 12 gauge wire, which looks like this, way thinner than, just like the uh, extension cord, way thinner than the, the cable that, uh, that you use for your generator. And you would have all of that power from the generator going through a smaller 12 gauge wire and only through a 20 amp breaker, let's say this one, and then from here you would be attempting to power you know, some of the other things. It, like I said, it does work but you really don't want to uh, do this for multiple reasons. Again, over, the overloading. But two, you'd have to remember, if you don't have an interlock switch, to flip off the main. Because again, you could be powering the street. Okay, so that's not good. But more importantly, you could have a fire. If you've got too much power, you're, gonna, you're going to... Um, uh, have a serious electrical issue if you're turning on all kinds of things and you're exceeding the, the 20 amps and the watts that that would uh, be supported through a 20 amp breaker. Um, the other part of it is is that this cord, once you plug one in, one side into the um, the generator, now this other side is live. So if you touch this, you're going to get shocked. You could kill yourself with this. So that's extremely dangerous too. So if, in the event that you try this, even though I don't recommend it, you'd want this plugged into the outlet first, and then you plug this into the generator so you're not exposing yourself to this, uh, this situation. So if you're going to do it the right way, like I discussed in the beginning of the video, you, and you want to install the, one of those interlock kits, you're going to need to get a permit. Don't attempt to do it without a permit. The permit will not be expensive. If, and you know you want to have it inspected. You want to do it right. You want to make sure you're doing it right. If the inspector fails you, he's going to tell you what's wrong. And it's only going to provide for additional safety for yourself. You know, there are certain things that, you know, maybe you feel more comfortable with. But the electrical panel is a dangerous thing. And you want to make sure that you're doing things right. So um, hopefully you learned a little bit of something about these, uh, these cords that could be dangerous and also the correct way to back feed your panel. And again, I'm linking to my video and how I d take you through how to install one of those interlock kits. It's not super expensive. It's the right way to do it. And it'll be able to conveniently power everything, keeping yourself safe, especially if you are away from home and you've got you know the family, the wife, the kids, and they don't know what to do and you're trying to describe it over the phone it's dangerous for them too. You want them to be able to safely turn on the generator and power the house while you're away. So hopefully this is helpful. Hit that like button for me if you don't mind. And I'll just wait up for the next video.